How's it going everyone? Jacob Rothberg here, bringing to you a brand new video on Amazon slash Kindle Publishing. What I want to talk about today is going to be along a different line of just giving out keywords. Instead of that, let's get into something a little bit more analytical. What I want to talk about today is how following trends on Amazon has its pros and cons with self-publishing. Other words, we're going to look at the pros and cons of self-publishing into trendy keywords. So a lot of my business has seen success with being able to recognize trends early, being able to publish on certain keywords where there wasn't a lot of competition at the time, and uh, being able to capitalize on uh, hot topics, trending topics, and getting sales on e on book titles, ebooks, audiobooks, etc., uh, before competition really set in and made it harder for me to garner sales. Um, I've had a lot of books reach that type of success, and um, likewise, I've also seen the consequences of basing a lot of my titles under the portfolio of following trends. So, to give you a very good example, I'm going to show you one of my books. Um, I was one of the first original publishers, believe it or not, one of the first original publishers for Ethereum, the, the, the cryptocurrency that everyone knows and loves. I'm sure if you know about crypto, cryptocurrency, you know Ethereum, there's no question as to what it is. And as you can see, I published it in July, just right before things really blow up with Bitcoin and blockchain technology and cryptocurrency. Like around October, November is when it really got hot. December it peaked. January it just kind of blew out <laughs> towards the end of the month and a lot of people got screwed over, including me. So anyway, to digress, um, I was one of the first people to publish on Ethereum and I was certainly rewarded for that. So as you can see here, I had a full-fledged paperback, the Kindle version, the audiobook, did well on all platforms. Had my 20 reviews, believe it or not, as you can see from the distribution breakdown, um, a lot of my reviews were actually real. I did do swaps. Um, some of my swapped reviews did get deleted, but fortunately my book was popular enough to where it did get organic reviews, positive and negative. And that's all right, because that makes it fair for a consumer to assess a book's quality. You know, you can't be conning everyone all the time. So why I chose this example is because it did really well for me on ebook and as such I'm able to visually display to you a graph showing the sales and the sales trends for this title. With the CreateSpace I can't really show you a visual graph using the CreateSpace platform but using book report for ebooks and for reporting my income, my revenue, I'm able to do that. So um, as you can see here I initially published my book in July. It was towards the end of the July. Um, to be exact, July 12th is when I got this published. And probably around, let's say, the very end of July is when I was finished with my whole ranking process. To get this from the third page on the keyword Ethereum, Ethereum books rather, to the very first page where I think I was actually number two or number three for the keyword for, for a few months which is pretty crazy considering that cryptocurrency now is such a hot keyword. But anyway, um, my first month in July was 37 bucks. August, I saw results where my, I sold 376 in ebooks. September is when I peaked out almost 500 off of the, just this one title. And then once the popularity waned in, competitors knew about the keyword, we saw more books get published on Ethereum. Uh, I was still doing considerably well, well, better than a lot of my other ebooks, but uh, sales did eventually decline to the point where now I really can't make money on this book. Granted, I do have a paperback version of the book. I can tell you straightforwardly that it follows this general trend in sales. So the pros of making a book based on a trend Obviously, there is so much sales potential with how much revenue you can generate off of just one book. For the ebook version alone, as you can see here, 
between July up and through now, I've made nearly $2,000 just from the Kindle version of this Ethereum book. For the Create Space, it follows around the same revenue as well, probably around $3,000. So all in all, I've grossed $5,000 revenue from one book. Um, actually, I've uh, made more than that. I could show you later on if I had to. Uh, audiobook sales. And I've, this is my most successful audiobook. I've sold 1,300 audiobooks to date on Amazon. And I would say one third of my sales, about 450 copies of audiobooks I've sold, were on Ethereum. And I also got bounties as well for referring people to uh, Audible. Anyhow, so I've made, I'd say, nearly $6,000 off of the keyword Ethereum with one book. And as such, another advantage of following a trend is that you can generate a lot of money off of one book. And generating one book, comparatively speaking, versus making a series of books, costs low overhead. So to make that $6,000 in actuality only costs me maybe $400 at the most to produce this title. That includes the actual content of the book, the title, and the swaps. Um, I might have done a little a bit of a campaign using Amazon marketing services to get this title going, but this was relatively early on still with my self-publishing career, I guess you could say, when I wasn't really yet honing in on using AMS to generate sales. So that actually ties into number three. You don't need to actually market your book a whole lot if it's getting so much organic traffic. I didn't need to learn how to use AMS for this book. Just because it was doing so darn well, I didn't allocate overhead. I didn't al allocate costs in marketing this book because I was just making money on autopilot. This is, was as effortless of a money-making vehicle as I could think up of. It was literally just following the process of what I learned in my self-publishing blueprint, following it, executing it properly, and voila, I had a book that made me a lot of money. Um, so that was a pro. Now, obviously the con here I want to show, if you do follow my strategy on using trendy keywords, it's sweet at first, and yes, it does definitely sour out. Trendy keywords don't last forever. That's why they are trends. They come and they go. So the reality of doing books this way is that you will continually have to come up with new keywords and keyword ideas. Now, for me, that is not such a problem. I am, I guess you would say, creative with being able to find profitable keywords. I would say I'm better than the average publisher at the very least. And hopefully that's something I can share with you as a skill set with uh, perhaps an upcoming course. If and only if there's enough interest of it for it, if it's enough of a problem for publishers, existing publishers who are already making some money, being able to do some keyword research, that's something we can look into in together, guys. Let me know in the comments if you are interested in a course for keyword strategies, how to find keywords. Maybe I'll give away a few keywords. Don't tell my neck of that. Anyhow, so that is the pros and cons mostly of a book like this. If you like my content, like this video and subscribe. Um, otherwise, I don't give a fuck what you think. I'm just doing my own thing and enjoying my time on here to help you all. Thank you.